It's 1804. 1804. 1804. Hi, everybody. Hello. Everybody had a chance to see the minutes of the meeting two months ago? Yes. May 17th. Make a motion to approve the minutes from May 17th, 2018. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. I'll say something about how good my minutes are then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do so we have a director's report? We have a director's report. Yes. It feels a little lengthy only because it's been eight weeks and not four. Yep. But I assure you there's nothing hiding in there. There's nothing gross in there. Um, it's been a busy couple months. So we had the Sunland 300th. Yep. Um, we had All States Road Race hit the pavement. We had all sorts of other stuff. Um, AJ Mazinski, my deputy, is in the room as well. Hi, AJ. Hey, AJ. <laughs> you um, have Jeff? And Jeff. And Jeff Upton. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, so the 300 um, went off without a hitch. We it was major. Yeah, it was kind of a major, major operation. We had all three ambulances in service, plus um, staff's personal vehicles were utilized, plus staff's personal equipment. We had people bring in their own pop-up tents and, and coolers and things like that. So um, we made it happen. Um, but it was definitely like, a, okay, we're doing these things, but we're not very well equipped for it, but hey, we made it happen. And then we had the gas tanker rollover in Waitley. Um, we sent two paramedic trucks to the initial call, um, and then um, once it was determined to be a recovery and not a rescue, uh, the operations went on for another 14 hours. And so we had a paramedic unit staffed on scene for those 14 hours and there's a there's Can I just ask you about the billing on that how does it, how do you bill for 14 hours so um, we have our normal um, standby rate a staff dedicated paramedic truck is a hundred dollars an hour that's a standard for the region um, and that is forwarded to I think Northwestern management is North oh, oh it's North um, Northwest the incident, incident management, management team is coordinating yeah. all the record keeping and then that will be forwarded and the insurance company for okay. for the accident for the trucking company um any available funds would come back to them yeah okay yeah right. um so that's how that works um uh, so we were there for 14 hours with a paramedic level truck which was great state came out with their resources um but it again kind of showed that we don't quite have the equipment for these things that that crew is in that ambulance and if we have to treat a patient we don't have any sort of like extra stuff so um you know like for um i'm trying to think of a good example we had a uh, not one of ours um another mm -hmm. ambulance rode or rolled over on nine one uh 91 everybody um non-life-threatening non-critical everybody was is doing okay uh, but we responded with two ambulances and we dumped one ambulance just for equipment and personnel. So basically, you know, we don't, where am I going with this? I'm going, <laughs> um, we're working with other departments talking about the regionalization of resources and things like that. If, you know. I thought that was already coordinated through the HMCC. Um, well, the coordination is through the <clears throat> medical coordination thing, but the issue is, okay, but really what we need is a truck with water, you know, yeah. pop-up tents, you know, like, oh, you that. know, additional Jeez, first, additional kind of first aid that. equipment. Right. Yes, exactly. Um, all that extra stuff. So, so we're look, I'm looking to um, District 9, District 10 about surplus vehicles, um, other departments about um, coordinating efforts to make sure we have something um, like that. Put the, put that up to Tracy at the FERCOG for yeah. HMCC because that Homeland Security could fund that. Yeah. Um, through the HMCC, so it's available. You know, we should have a couple up and down. Right. Right. You know, right. it shouldn't be just here, but yeah. there should be one lower down in Hampshire County. Because yeah. I'm sure so they're that, just as stressed. So well, that's if you have a mass mass incident or, or a major thing, you show up with your truck and you've just depleted all the resources yeah. on that. You need a second runner to bring you more. Yeah, stuff. well, I, I think like the idea? parade is a good example in that, you know, we, we basically set up a makeshift first aid station in yep. which, you know, people could be treated. brought to yep. and treated and then, you know, taken to the hospital or an ambulance. Right. 
one of those ambulances in our fleet became that station because gotcha. we needed the equipment off of that ambulance to perform that role. We needed yeah. those medical supplies. We yeah. needed, you know, the stretcher or the chair. Oh, yeah. And that effectively takes a perfectly good ambulance that co that costs two hundred fifty thousand dollars off the street, right, right. whereas a truck, a truck with some medical supplies that isn't licensed as an ambulance right. that isn't needed to transport patients could serve that role. You drive it to the scene, you set it up. It's you, kind of like what I suggested was yeah, way you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, 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 right. Exactly what right. Gary said months ago. You yeah. throw that tent up, you have that gear, and you're not taking an ambulance out of service for that role. Yeah. Um, the other things too would be. Uh, we just had a cardiac arrest in town, and we sent two ambulances to it for the additional equipment. You know, an ambulance and that second vehicle would have made more sense. Um, By the way, it was a good save. It was, we, yes, it, um, the report back from the crew is that it was a save, so the, the patient was brought to the hospital alive, so that's great. Um, so all those things, how do, we, how do we more efficiently use our resources, and how do we provide the resources that people are expecting of South County? Mm -hmm. um, so, why don't you make a list and um, you know between be the R that? yeah between the REPC H HMCC and Homeland Security, I should be able to hustle something. Yeah, and okay. I've got I've got somebody who's an expert grant writer for exactly this type of thing. Yeah. He's got a template, and we'll yeah right. Um, um, so just make a list, and there must be somebody else out there that has a similar unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've been taking pictures of them. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, we talked about the, I think last time, um, the Stop the Bleed training for... Um, well, we just authorized more money for it because there's so many more people. Yeah. Um, it's open for more and, and we did get EMS credits, so make sure yeah. anybody that That's needs great. continuing ed goes because it's good outreach but it's also a wonderful opportunity for getting the credits. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had a really nice training day up at uh, GCC for the EMS response to the violent encounter, I think is what they call it. Um, I was one of the speakers up there and great turnout from South County. Uh, thanks to that, thanks to some initiatives um, by the department and by its individuals, we're one of the most highly trained departments in the region now for right. this type of thing. And um, we had some unspent uniform um, and personal protective equipment funds at the end of the fiscal year. So we deployed um, ballistic protection and stab protection vests mm -hmm. to all of our ambulances. Um, just like any other personal protective equipment, we wear high visibility on the highway, we yeah. wear helmets when we're doing extrication, we wear gloves when we're dealing with um, blood. Yeah. Um, this is just something where if the crew finds himself in a situation where they're worried about an act of violence or something, yeah. it's available to them. So with the training that they've already received, um, they're familiar with that equipment. So it's just one more step of trying to take care of ourselves in the community. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would appreciate it if anyone needs the credits to go to this training because it's um, been generated by our Union 38 teach, uh, school nurses. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it has wonderful region-wide participation, but it is originally from the Union 38 nurses. And Meg Birch from Conway is the person who originated the request. So um, it's good outreach opportunity because all our Union 38 people will be there. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, um, Subtle and touch a truck, Wakeley into Elementary School Safety Day, all things that uh, South County EMS um, attended and gave talks and answered questions. And thanks to the available equipment that we have and our dedicated members, we were able to do all those things without impacting our ability to respond right. to 911 calls. So that was, that was good. Our annual state OEMS inspection and relicensing uh, happened at the end of June, went with, off without a hitch. Good. Um, it's great. Our drug license showed up, that's why we're in our new building. Uh, I want to make sure I, I worded this rather carefully in my report, so I'm going to quote myself. Though the application had been received in late April, state personnel in Boston were unable to find and forward the issued license for many weeks. Thankfully, an employee of Representative Kulik's office was able to find it. Um, so That's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, um, yeah, I, we, 
That arrived quick, and I received an apology phone call, but uh, it got us in here by July 1st. That's great. Um, so uh, we're over here. Uh, also, as of July 1st, um, the scuttlebutt around the town of Amherst um, for a long time has provided uh, EMS services to the town of Hadley, and the town of Hadley recently went out to bed and selected Action EMS to be their 911 provider. So now for the town of Hadley, if you dial 911 and ambulance, you'll get action instead of Amherst. Uh, because they are a EMS service that abuts our primary area, so Sunderland, uh, we, uh, I met with them, talked to them about their operations, and we signed a mutual aid agreement, which is just part of the course. And that's for unforeseen events. We back them up just like they could back us up. So um, I've worked uh, with action EMS in the past, and. Um, uh, they're, by all accounts, a great service, and I have no concerns about them um, serving the town of Hadley. So we're happy to have them nearby. Um, the other nice thing about that, too, is it adds another service into the mix. So we didn't lose Amherst. They're still in Amherst. Um, so we have even more resources available to us. Just a question with the action. Yeah. I know we're paramedic level. Are they also paramedic? They are, paramedic actually. Level? Yep. They are also paramedic level. Um, they have a very similar... Uh, call volume as we do. So we, we're we probably going to treat about 1,300 to 1,400 patients this upcoming year. I think Hadley does similar to that, um, and they are actually looking at a very similar staffing model. So okay. one ambulance 24-7 at the paramedic level, and then a second ambulance uh, during their busiest time. So that's reassuring to me to know that you know they're going to be staffing to the level that I think they need to be staffing right, right, to. Right. Um, well, so, that was my that was my only yeah. concern. If we're if we're covering with our paramedic level, yeah, then the same right, was that leave us in town, <laughs> no. or vice versa? If yeah. our first yeah. two are tied up, what are we receiving yeah, from it, them? It would be a, a, yeah. a paramedic level service, and okay. yeah, so that's uh, that's that's great. Oh. All the department heads, public safety department heads and fire and EMS met in Greenfield recently um, because of an uptick in mutual aid requests for EMS to the cities of Greenfield and Turner's. If you're reading between the lines, that's MedCare that provides that service. So basically we all got together in a room and said, what's going on? Uh, South County, we normally go three or four times a month to Greenfield recently. Um, and in May, we went 14 times. Um, and so we're like, what's going on? Um, we had a nice long conversation. We're continuing to have conversations, but in June it dropped right back down to three or four. So MedCare tells us, you know, they were having some staffing difficulties that month and, and it, it appears to have been fixed. But it's, it's segued into a longer conversation about, you know, at the county level, what are, what are we looking at? You know, Greenfield and Turner's has fire department based ambulances, but they're at the basic level, yeah. you know, and, and stuff like that. So those conversations are ongoing. Um, and then facility, we're in the facility. So as of July 1, we moved uh, operations over and all of our equipment and operations have been transferred to this building. So they say when you move in someplace new, right? It's like you 90% moved in in the first month and the next 10% takes a decade or so. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say we're about 95% moved in. Uh, we're gonna look around the building a little bit and we'll, we'll see some areas where we still need to move in a little, but um, it, it's, it's great, to, great to be here. Deerfield Academy, as we all know, donated the building. Um, the uh, asphalt out front was all states asphalt that was coordinated through Deerfield before it was even, uh, the building was even handed over, so that was all ready to go. Uh, Atlantic Furniture uh, made a very generous donation of tables, desks, chairs, um, and we did a nice little press release with them and took some photographs, and uh, the estimated retail value of that stuff is over $9,000. So it, it's right. really made a, a huge impact. The chairs we're sitting on were donated by a local citizen, um, and uh, it's, it's great. It's really nice to uh, have people approaching us and, and wanting to help out like that. Uh, we're still, you know, this this table is a little teeny. Um, <laughs> uh, we're still, I'm I'm working on a folding table in my office, but we're getting there. Um, everything yeah. we need to operate is is here, and so it's it's really good. Uh, and the department members themselves have been pitching in and donating. Uh, 
They've got our respite area, our, our day room, our kitchen there. We've got two nice little recliners in there. And all the full-time staff pitched in together, 30 bucks nice. a piece, nice. uh, and got themselves those things. There are also some TVs in the bunk rooms that were donated by staff members for each other. So that's, good. that's great. Um, the IT, security infrastructure, appliances, miscellaneous building supplies, um, some shelving units, everything, the whole kit and caboodle, um, we spent out of the operational reserves and the final tally on that from FY18 was $47,330.17. That was transferred from operational reserves to the um, whatever the building office equipment line item was as a accounting purpose. So we can go back and we can see that that money was spent for that purpose yep. um, out of those reserves. Zach, you did a very good job. That was very reasonable. Uh, yeah, I, you know, there's still, thank you. Um, still a table we need to get. There's yeah, you know, there's still some odds and ends, right? I mean, so some tables, some some miscellaneous furniture, some storage racks, you know. Yeah. Um, generator? Um, the generator, so the generator needs to be purchased. The That is being coordinated with Kevin Scarborough, the, uh, the what, what, uh, public works superintendent mm -hmm. um, for the town of Deerfield. There's a generator being purchased for the town hall, and the specs are nearly, if not exactly, identical. So Kevin being in charge of the building stuff like that, uh, he told me that he was going to, we'll just, we'll buy two, see if we can get a discount, and then maintenance schedules and repairs and things will be consistent across the multiple Deerfield buildings yeah. that he's responsible for. So. Um, the pad is out there. It's ready to be wired. Deerfield Academy will donate the installation of the generator. Um, it just needs to be procured um, at this point. Cool. Um, diesel exhaust source capture system for the carcinogens and the soot that gets on supplies and things like that. We still don't have a quote for that. It's not available. Um, there was a building security camera system that was quoted originally. Um, that hasn't been purchased or anything like that. Um, there is some miscellaneous radio communications um, equipment, employee notification hardware that hasn't been evaluated or quoted, but that's kind of, you know, like a base radio in our comms room so we can talk to dispatch and things like that. Um, and the washer and dryer hasn't been um, sourced yet, but there are hookups, including a vent out in the bay for those, and Deerfoot Academy is going to donate the installation for that. So once we get our hands on um, an over-under washer-dryer, that'll, that'll go in. Um, I guess the big things now, uh, we're going to need some storage racks out in the bay. Um, Gary. Gary, thank you. I had a, I'm not going to make a joke about having a stroke there, but thanks, Gary. Um, You've got uh, a handle on the old racks from the Western Mass Regional Library building, so we're gonna look at that. Those might prove perfect um, for everything, if not for a large chunk of it. Uh, employee lockers, like metal lockers, we could still use those. Yep. Um, so if, you know, those things tend to show up for free from time to time. If somebody out there um, <laughs> has a lead on, on some employee lockers that we could have donated or get into cheaply, that would be very appreciated. Um, you know, and then a conference table and things like that. And then uh, the last thing on the building, there's still the issue of the lease agreement. I talked to Wendy Foxman, coordinated with town council. Town council called me and said, what should the lease agreement say? And I said, as much as I would love to be the sole person deciding what this lease agreement says. This is probably above my pay grade. We'll um, it seems like the consensus is anything outside of the building is going to be Town of Deerfield, um, Public Works um, concern, and then anything inside of the building will be South County EMS and, and, and our stuff. Well, and this is part of the building, like the mm -hmm. generator. I know that's outside, but that would but be a Deerfield. Here you go. Deerfield so this person. language needs to be figured out. Um, mm -hmm. That language how much, which is the elephant in the room, and then um, how much of that money is going to go back into funding future repairs or upgrades or things right. like that to the building. Um, so 
Deerfield that seems like a town of Deerfield yeah. Board of Oversight discussion. We'll get that um, figured out. But, but my point being is that... Well, um, the, select board, the select board has to figure out what we want first. We will. And, and justify yeah. it and discuss it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring it to the table. Yep. Um, maybe next month, maybe... You know, the month after, but I'm in no rush yeah. personally. I'm just trying to keep the ambulances rolling. Um, yep. But uh, it's on the it's on the radar. Yep. So we'll cool. Down. Um, and then for January through June, 576 patients treated, which halfway through the year and halfway through our calls. Yep. Um, so there's that, I guess. <laughs> so we're so we're on um, we're on par for the twelve hundred ish calls. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly right. right. I, you know, like another like ten percent increase over last year, mm -hmm. basically. You know, like pretty consistently. Like that. And that's only six percent. I mean, if we see any sort of exponential growth over the next six months, it'll be even more. But right. um, for the purposes of calculations and Budget estimations, you know, good. it's. Uh, everything um, is. There was just a couple things that seemed much lower. The um, your other is only thirty-five versus ninety for the whole year. Yep. The year before, and your refusals seem to be just a dash high for half the year through compared to last year. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know that's that's getting into the weeds. The rule, rule of averages is you know. <clears throat> There's a lot of variables on refusals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's like that either Sometimes means something or it doesn't. I didn't know yeah. if, you, if you knew anything. I mean, if you no, knew anything. No, you know, it's, sometimes when you talk about EMS, you you look at your refusals, you know, and sometimes if you have under, not underperforming, if you have poor providers, they have a disproportionately larger number of refusals yeah. for, you know, different reasons. Um, that is not a problem at South County EMS. Right. So uh, there's nothing in those numbers that leads me to believe that we need to be concerned about anything. Okay. It's, um, yeah, it's... No, everything else is, looks really yeah. good. Yeah, you know, our intercepts, though, you know, those are... Yeah, those are down. Uh, up. No, no. Oh, no, they're Because up. we're only looking at half a year's worth. Right. Yeah, that's right, you're right. Um, I'm just looking at 25 that's versus a good thing. 21. Yeah, well, and some of this, too, is... Way. It, you know, it's, it's a good thing because it means that we're doing them because we can, right. you know, like we, You're we not have, taking from others. Too. Right. Um, and it means revenue. Right. Uh, basically, right. we are providing a service for somebody who needs it and we're getting reimbursed. Um, and we're calling you because you're capable. Right. And we're, right. And, you yep. know, it's one of those things where we had a major, we didn't have a major fire. Greenfield had a major fire on Elm Street recently. Um, it was like a hundred something degrees that day. Um, and we were... Uh, firefighters were dropping left and right. You know, yeah. you put on how many pounds of gear, mm. you know, in 100 degrees, and they're good for five minutes, and then yeah. they're out and they're drinking water. And uh, South County EMS was requested by name by the fire chief from Greenfield because he felt most comfortable having South County EMS there protecting the firefighters. That's awesome. Um, so it says volumes. It says it says a lot. Yeah. Um, so you know, they're calling us because they want us and they need us and they trust us. Um, and if we can provide that service, it's not about the money, but one intercept covers the cost of, you know, an eight hour span of that paramedic being on duty. So right. um, it's, you know, we're not losing any money by providing that service. No, that's sure. why um, we all are not paying more because when we had the BLS, you know, basic service, we were paying for intercepts. Right. On top of running in the basic service. Exactly. And that was what was so costly. Is that right? So, yeah. yeah. And now, and now that's flopped. Yeah. All those times yeah. we were paying, now we're, we're you know, we're, we're either collecting or, you know, exactly. Yeah. So, that's great. Yeah. Um, well, it offsets the cost of paramedic versus basic. That's basically really what you're talking about. Yeah. Not, and then we have paramedic for everybody all the time. Yep. Yeah. So it's huge. It's a huge thing. So how many intercepts? would you need to have to expand the service and have a full-time full intercept truck? Those numbers, I don't know off the top of my head. I can tell you right now, though, it wouldn't make sense unless we had a commitment and we could count on those intercepts. Right. You know, it was if a specific was, company that hired you to do this. Right, you know, or like a neighboring community was like, we do this many calls a year, this is the data, we need this many intercepts a year, is that a service you're willing to provide? Yeah. Then, you know, we can start crunching those numbers. Right. Um, 
it would. Uh, we're at one and a half trucks staffing right now, right? So one truck 24 seven and that additional crew during the day for eight hours. Uh, one and three quarters trucks, two trucks feels a lot more appropriate on some days, um, but not every day. Yeah. Um, so yeah. as these numbers climb up, as you know, in total calls, that might become more obvious. Um, or if another community comes to us and says, we prefer you because we trust your providers, then it might become more obvious. But yeah, you're at three plus calls a day now, average, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, I, it's, it feels inevitable, um, but you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make any claims or anything right now. Especially it's something we could possibly grow into. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's my point. Like, I, I'm not trying to scare anybody right, right now. <laughs> um, but it's definitely, we're not, we're not going down in line. So that's good. Um, and I have a expense report that was generated uh, on June 28th. Um, so it's pretty close for the majority of things, but um, Brenda is still working tirelessly to balance all those books and close yep. out the year. So I usually expect to see a final report by the end of July. Um, but um, I, you know, like a little bit over in medical supplies, right. we corrected for that budget for next year, um, a little bit under in other supplies. Um, oxygen, you know, things like that. Um, the thing that isn't represented in this is we talked about that operational reserve being spent um, for the building stuff, mm -hmm. that $47,000. So that's not yet reflected in here just because this expense report came out before we moved that money over. Um, but um, So we'll probably be looking at this again next month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, we'll have, we'll have the finalized report. We'll be able to compare it to our FY19 budget and really kind of um, see where we are, but um, there's, I think, I think anybody looking at this is going to be like, hey, it looks great. I think mm -hmm. we, we, um, we did a good job with the 18 budget. Yep. Yeah, I, I talked to Zach about um, went out RFP, you know, to um, do our billing again, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think we're pretty happy with Comstar, and we're we're paying just under five percent, and we have yeah. The, um, additional services from them for, you know, being able to do printouts on where we are all the time for reports, but also you know make sure we have the billing. Yeah. Um, and that, so the only thing I I can think of is we might we just have to keep make sure our collectibles are you know we're on top of our collectibles mm -hmm. and yeah. and if we need to go to an actual collection agency if it's Comstar isn't being aggressive enough then we need to. No, don't let it sit. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I literally have no complaints about Comstar. Working with them on the administrative side, they're, they're very proactive, they interface with our, our electronic record system, so they get things billing out within two weeks, it's never longer than that. Um, they generate reports for us, they give us market information. Anytime new legislation comes down about Medicaid and Medicare, they're actually reaching out to us and giving us the information that we need and handling a lot of paperwork on our behalf, you know, here's the letter you need to submit to make sure that you're you're included yep. in this. You know, please sign it and forward it to this type of person. So um, we did do a, we went out to bid a number of years ago. Um, historically, Deerfield used Comstar. The other towns used Coastal. Coastal. Um, and we went out, and the rates were exactly the same. And Comstar was um, offering. Um, more services or, or more staff at that time. You know, maybe we look at it again, um, but. I don't think it would hurt to have that exercise of going out to bed and seeing what the other person has. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be, might be worth it. Keep, I, keeps I them think, honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always, well, no. I think it's just, I mean, getting the updates on Medicare and, and, and being flexible in Medicaid, Medicare payments is really important. And Zach, is really, you know, the big thing is to get the signature from the patient because what happens is if the si they won't pay without the signature. So you send in the bill and then it has to go to the elderly person or the person 
uh, that might be Sometimes impaired. Sometimes signatures are hard to get. And, and it's hard to get that signature, so you're waiting around for that, and you're waiting around for a reduced Medicare payment. So the best thing is that you get that signature, and our, our people are trained to do that, and we don't seem to have too many problems with that. And, and Comstar is on top of anything that we have to adjust mm -hmm. and making sure that we know about that. And that actually is worth a lot because we, about a third of our billing is Medicaid, Medicare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's important. And that, that's fairly consistent. So we have to be on top of that. And we don't, I mean, there's already a lag with, you know, some of the stuff that's going on. So on the federal level. so. We don't want to increase that lag by... Whatever happened to that legislation they were trying to pass last year, did that go anywhere? No. 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 As far as I know. Uh, and it hasn't money been back to the patient instead of us? Mm. No. And um, because there's so many protests, including us, we protested. So, um, all right, you know, I sent a letter in our name, but... That would be painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, paid after oh, that. I mean, we'd be, was... we couldn't, I, I don't have any idea how we would be able to do it because then you're chasing down people for their money that they've already been sent a check for. Credit card? Oh yeah. my God. It's crazy. So, anyway, no, that, and as far as I know, that's not been resurrected. But <clears throat> that, see, that was something that came out from Comstar to, so that we were able to jump on that right away. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's kind of valuable. Yeah. Um, so, if, if coastal comes in relatively the same, I, I just, I mean, I prefer the Comstar for that reason. Yeah, because somebody very, you know we're already and you're comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm I think they give us a little bit of service that way, too. Because, you know, it's really hard to be on top of all this stuff all the time. I mean, you hear stuff, but, you know. But although, like people like Hatfield, they have good experience with coastal, so I'm not I'm not adverse. I'm, not, I'm just saying there are some huge advantages of Comstar that I think is worth it. Um, did I miss anything? Motion to adjourn. No. Thank you, Zach, very much. Yes, thank you. Second. Great job. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye.